Sorry, I got distracted here a little. Um, as we said, we're starting with this one over here. So, same player plays twice, exception. Or maybe actually it is a better and better way thing to. No, let's let's get started here. Okay. Same player plays twice, and here we would expect an exception. And to do that in NUnit, sorry, in MS Test, I would write here expect that exception. Expected exception, exactly. This type of, um, I think, operation. Invalid operation exception. That sounds good. I hit F6. And I got a failing test. So, gameplay X. Actually, now that I see this, I think I don't really like this X over here. And I make another test here as a reminder to myself. As a to with a to-do list about um, sometimes I, I, I name the tests to XXX, so and that means I need to rename them later. I don't like this gameplay X. I would rather see something like paint.player1 dot set uh, play zero zero. Or maybe even something like that. Play one play zero zero. Yeah. Or something like. I definitely want to get rid of the um, string over here. So API. Hmm. All right. Back to the failing test. Um, when we play the X twice in a row, we should get an exception. Okay, let's look into the play. There is nothing in here. Um, so what I do is I make a new variable called previous marker equals marker. And if the previous, if the marker is the same as the previous, hmm. oops, not class view. Create a variable over here. As the previous marker, then throw new operate operation exception. I hit F6 just to see. Yep. Test this green. Um, no, I don't really like that. What's wrong with you? Ah, don't like style cop here. Let me turn off style cop. How do I turn off style cop? Style cop. I use the quick search for tools, run style cop. Uh, I don't want to run it, I want to disable it. I think it's a setting on the solution, let me see. Style cop setting, yeah, there it is. Go away. Okay. Oh, I just realized that my unit test is still called unit test. This should be my tic tac toe specifications and I specify tic tac toe uh, with my examples that I've written up cool F6 this test is passing now I think now we should move to the next one on my to do list players play one same field exception. Let's do that one. So I go over here. So when the X and the Y, there is already a marker. Place play in the same field. Play, yes, play. Um, I call this marker. Marker already placed exception. F6 to see if we get a red test. Mm -hmm. that one I could just say if x hmm. I could do the same as before with the previous x and the previous y or I could introduce some kind of a board where I remember all the markers hmm. I just it feels like it is already too early to introduce the, the board here Mm. 
Why not? Why not? Yep, let's introduce a board here. And the board is just a array. Yep. Board equals new um, three, I guess it is. Um, if board on the position x and y is null, I think. Yep. Otherwise, set it to marker. See if that passes the test. No. Actually, we got uh, an exception now with another test, which is good because that means ah oh, three free because I have a two uh, free, as a three based array um, goes out of range. Oh, actually, that's a good test for the future um, make port generic um, yeah so this is one is out of range so zero zero one one this should be two two I think I would tackle the I think I would go in the direction of this getting this logic implemented in instead of hard coding this return X here. Um, so what I do what is read on the uh, every class. Um, what I do is I try to write a fading test that drives me into the direction of implementing the logic behind get winner. Example game player two wins all markers at diagonal. All markers in one row. Let's start with the easy one here. So I say all markers in one row. So zero zero one um, zero zero one zero two zero and the same bit for player two. So I'm switching those two. Well, zero, zero, um, zero, one, zero, two. That will be the first row for player two. Let me see. Uh, this is still wrong here. This is no good. No, zero, zero, one. Yep, let's run this. Um, the test is not failing. Let me get rid of this. The test is not failing because I didn't actually correct the. Oops, wrong, wrong key. I didn't actually correct the test. Now we should get a failing test. Yeah. Now get winner. Now get winner should basically calculate based on this board that calls a couple of strings. Um, Now what I can could do oh, before I implement, I could actually just return the symbol that is in left hand top corner. So what I do is I say port zero zero, which would always be the winning position. Hopefully, let's see. It takes a while. Yeah, it is actually always the winning position. That's okay. Um, the game fulfills my specification, so I actually need to write more tests that drive me into a um, into the into the different combinations, which is good. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to write another to-do list to myself about no winner yet, and that would be. So in this case, there would be no winner yet. Just thinking. Is false, get winner. Something along those lines. Mm. I think I'm 
going to implement the business rules because they are quite interesting at this time. But the, the business rules around the board and how to calculate a winner on, on the board. Get me there. Mm. And because I don't like this, this is very hard to read for me. I can't really figure out. Um, yeah, uh, this is this is too hard. Example games. What I would like to do is something like I would give the game a board, for example, something like this. Where mm, board that thing. I would like to give that to the game and then ask the game who the winner is, something like this. So this should be initial board setup. Create that constructor. Yeah, that's fine. Well, let's create this easy case. Let's get Windows X. Mm, doesn't like it. Oh, the default constructor. Oh, mm, that's breaking all over the place. What I do is I create the default constructor F6 and our XXX initialize board. Get winner turns. Yep, that's good enough. Um, I'm removing a little bit of duplication before I move on. I move this to the outer, the outer rotating class. <coughs> okay, let's get going with this one here. Here I'm testing. What am I testing about, actually? I'm calling the constructor. I'm testing that the constructor sets the internal board with this board that I'm passing into the game. And then I'm asserting on the get winner. That's quite a lot of logic. So maybe I should extract that into a different place. Mm. Initialize board X in a row. Yeah, um, let's go to the game initial board setup. Let's 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 part, let's fix that test. So with this initial board setup, I should probably single character. And then I have my loop variable, and I'm setting that in the board position E divided by 3 E modulo 3 equals single character to string. Let's see if I got that right. E divided to uh, three means um, for three zero two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how can I test this? Mm. 
I would actually like to write a test afterwards where I say um, init port and set first character read first character as expected that would be an interesting test so for example if I say um, this is X the first character well maybe let's pick like this I say this one is X game board equals new game board equals new game board with this initial board setup and then I would like to do a assert our equal I expect the X on position game board um, to Two. Yeah, but that's not anymore a test for the tic tac toe game. Now I'm actually testing this game board thingy. So I'm initializing the game board with this array, and I'm expecting that on position 2.2 I have an X. So now we are actually out of the scope of the tic tac toe game, and we are a little bit deeper. Which is okay, but that tells me actually that I have to, to change my class design here. So I have the class game, and I need to. What I could do is I could expose the board um, string, which is not nice. So now I have this board that I would read, but that's here what I'm doing here. That's actually bad because here I'm actually changing my design just to for this test. Just to make this clear, what I'm doing here, I'm exposing the board here just for my test. This is very bad. So what I should rather do is get rid of that and write a test that actually targets this bit here. A test that is targeting the board itself. That's a new class. Yep. Yes, let's do that. So, instead of having this bit here, I create a new a new game board class. So I initialize that game board with that initial board setup, and then when I call this, yeah, I like that great class. Yeah, that's all good. And I would then let's see how many tests we have, which go crazy. Some of them. I need to create that this indexer. I just want to get the test going. It's true, get winner is X. So the board is actually broken. So here, I'm using now the game board. So that means I'm pushing that down. And here I'm saying. Yep, that's all good. And here I'm saying game board, game board, equals new game board with initial board setup. Yep, so now I have replaced the the game board that was before a 
it was before I an array of things. It is now abstracted in a way in this game board class, which is quite nice. Let's see how many tests are failing. There is this one here. The indexer has no setter. Okay, I have to create the set accessor for this. So here I would say board to position x and y is the value that you gave me. Oh, now I have three failing tests. Hmm, no, really, why is that one failing? Operation is not available in current state of object. Value to, to 